like it or not. And so they all came out from all that region and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. You see, this was a baptism unto repentance. They came confessing their sins. They were responding to the message, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, what's he going to tell them? I mean, after all, these are the leaders of the religion. These are the respected elite. He took one look at them. He said unto them, O generation of vipers! Does that any way to talk to these well-dressed, well-respected religious leaders? Hey, you bunch of snakes! Hmm. That's what he told them. You generation, or brood in other words, of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, notice he didn't just say it's, you can't be saved, notice what he said. Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. What was the problem with the Pharisees? They didn't come to repent. They came to be there because all the other people were there. And they had to be seen there. They were the leaders of these people. So they made their appearance their cameo guest appearance there. The righteous Pharisees dripping with pride and arrogance. Phylacteries attached to the hand and forehead. Leather pouches with scriptures strapped around their arm and around their head. Long flowing robes with blue tassels hanging on them. Oh yeah, they were there. Not to repent! but to be seen. And that was their problem. They weren't there to repent. When we come into the presence of God, we should all feel that desire to let go and let God have his way and lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us. And I don't care who you are, every one of us has got something and we find ourselves having to set aside and say, Lord, just take this away and help me to walk closer with thee. And notice, he was one jump ahead of them. Not only did he preach repentance to them, but now he was going to come against their pride and arrogance. He said, And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. What was the big promotional that these people used, these Pharisees? We are descendants of Abraham. You know, in this day and age, we still have fundamentalist ministers saying, all oh, the descendants of Abraham, they're all going to be saved. The Jews are special. They got a special land, they're a special people, they're going to have their temple rebuilt, they're going to find a red heifer somewhere, God's going to accept their sacrifices, and they get into all this Schofieldism and the secret rapture, seven year tribulation. Listen, all of that is fairy tale. None of that is in the Bible. You've got to do a lot of scripture twisting and turning and moving it around to make anything even seem to fit right then you have to ignore a lot of other verses. Listen, God has only one people. Whether they be Jews or Gentiles or anybody else, we're all saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no other Savior. Nobody's saved by a rebuilt temple. Nobody's saved by the ashes of a red heifer. See, people go back and they embed themselves in this Old Testament. They forget about the New Covenant. They forget about Calvary. That that wasn't quite enough. And you hear some of these 
well-known televangelists talk about how the Jews will once again find this red heifer and sacrifice it and the ashes of the red heifer will sanctify the people. We're not sanctified by the ashes of a cow. We're sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. If you can find a red heifer somewhere, Duke and I will barbecue it. Come on. I've, some people would hear that and say, oh, sacrilege. And they'll listen to people all day insult Jesus Christ and take his name in vain. They'll say nothing but talk about the red heifer and, oh, how dare you, huh? Listen. There is no future temple other than Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the temple. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. I am he that was and is and is to come. You can't get any better than that. Paul didn't go out and tell the Jews, you're special. You're going to be saved without Christ, so I'll just leave you alone. You, you're fine. You're all going to be saved because you're Jews. Oh, no, no, they got to come the same way. And a lot of them did. And a lot of them didn't. Same thing holds true with any race of people. We're not saved by race, we're saved by grace. Amen. And so here John the Baptist is handling it very nicely. He said, and think not, in verse 9, think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. I like that. He said, don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. He's saying your race means absolutely nothing. Nothing. Now, I've actually heard of preachers that have gotten up in Assembly of God churches and some of these other churches, fundamentalists, and preached Jesus. And the pastor pulled them aside and scolded them because there was a rabbi present. And how dare you preach about Jesus if a rabbi is there? You see how bad it's gotten? That is absolutely sick. They need to hear it too. Who knows, that rabbi can repent, but never will until he hears. Now, we can see this, and John the Baptist made this clear. Uh, sometimes it boggles my mind how so many people, for some reason, can't grab onto this. That there's only one plan of salvation. There's only one voice. The voice of one. Crying in the wilderness. And now also the axe is laid to the root of the trees. In other words, these trees are going to be literally taken down. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. It's the fruit of the Spirit that must be brought forth. Now John went on and said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. John saying, I'm not even worthy to carry his shoes, this one that is coming. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Hear it now, folks. The one who was to come, Jesus, shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The preacher may take you and put you in the water and put you down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But then Jesus takes over and he baptizes you with the Holy Ghost. 
and with fire. 